morning, and welcome to an all-new Eye of the Tiger. I'm Cam Madrano. And I'm Megan Huber. Recently, Roar in the Patty Baker Theater has looked a little different. While previously students could sit wherever they wanted, administrators have required students to sit two seats apart from each other in an effort to keep a focused learning environment. We go to Zach Alumgum with the story. Over the past month, administrators have changed the policy regarding student seating in the Patty Baker Theater during Roar. According to Assistant Principal Jason Wilson, this is meant to keep students focused and to maintain a quiet and collaborative environment. We just uh, looked at it from an administrative standpoint and saying how can we better support all kids and I'm uh, not saying that we have to you know, demand of that they're actually working on work, but we just want them to be um, respectful of the others around them that might want to get some work done. Students' reactions to this change have been mixed. I really don't mind that because, well, there aren't really a whole lot of kids that tend to go into the, into the, to the theater here, so I really don't think it's too unreasonable. I've been coming to the theater since I was a freshman every day, and we'd hang out with our friends, and now we like can't talk at all. We have to sit two seats apart, and I'm not really a fan of it. It's made like we're in the theater pretty lame. Thanks, Zach. On the subject of happenings in the Patty Baker, Roseville High School Theater Company opened its fall play Great Gatsby last night. Performances will continue tonight and tomorrow at 7 and 2 p.m. respectively, and next Thursday, Friday, and Saturday at 7. Regular admission is $10 at the door and $8 for ASB. The Pink Out Rally will take place next Friday during the one lunch after third period. The rally will feature games, performances from the dance team and dance class, and a speech from a breast cancer survivor. T-shirts will also be sold today during both lunches in Senior Square. We now go over to Kobe Estrada for sports. Good morning and welcome to this Friday's edition of EOTSN. I'm Kobe Estrada. Last Monday, girls golf competed in the second 18-hole CBC meet at Wood Creek Golf Course. The team placed second, clinching a playoff spot for the second year straight. Um, we practiced almost every day but Friday, and I don't know, we went out a lot. We had a lot of matches, so, you know, just improving our game. Also, five members of the team made all-conference teams. Kayla Harry, Julia Tavanini, and Gabby Giovaccini made first team all-conference, and Kira Runkle, Annie Lemos made second team all-conference. It feels good and really accomplishing for all my hard work to pay off. And in other sports news, football plays tonight at Yuba City. And student government is starting to sell pink out shirts for the pink out game on November 1st. And that's all in your home for Roswell High School Sports Top Plays, Breakdowns, and more. I, the Tiger Sports Network, EOTSN. And now we go over to entertainment. Thanks, Kobe, and welcome to this Friday segment of Arts and Entertainment. I'm Isabella Foley. The Netflix original movie El Camino, a Breaking Bad movie, was released, and it was everything a Breaking Bad fan could have expected. From cameos of past characters, cinematography, and lighting, this film fits perfectly with the show as if it never stopped. El Camino continues the story of Jesse Pinkman after he escapes captivity at the end of Breaking Bad. It answers the question we begged to know for years. What happened to Jesse Pinkman? At the start of the movie, we get a small recap of all the major events that occurred in Breaking Bad, leading up to where the characters are at the start of the movie. It included many cameos from characters from the show, starting the film off with one that includes Jesse and Mike, which was a flashback giving some context as to where Jesse plans to go, which is Alaska. As the movie progresses, we get to see past characters like Badger and Skinny Pete, along with a number of flashbacks including Todd, the man who held Jesse captive for months. The best cameo in the movie had to be the diner scene with Walter White, the other chemist in the duo who died of cancer at the end of the series. It added a reminiscent feel along with some classic humor from Walt and Jesse. The movie featured beautiful, colorful scenes with camera angles that mirrored those from the show. It allowed the movie to tie in seamlessly with the original show. It also showed how much of the city of Albuquerque has changed, with the fast food restaurant Los Poyos Hermanos and Jesse's lawyer Saul Goodman gone. Overall, I think this movie was a huge success. It had everything it needed to end off the Breaking Bad story in a positive light. And now we go back to news. Thanks, Isabella. One student has found a way to combine her imaginative passions with a keen sense of business and brush up on her entrepreneurial skills in the process. We go over to Amelia Schaefer with the story. Sophomore Nala McCoy's artistic passions have found themselves in new medium, phone cases. My sisters were always kind of into art, and then I kind of just caught on at a younger age. 
so I've just kind of been practicing since then. My friends asked me to paint their phone cases, so I took it home and then I painted like a meme that they wanted or like just put it together and I surprised them with it. Koi then got the idea to expand her work to others. I put it on my story so like if people wanted me to paint their stuff like AirPods, shoes, or like phone cases that they could like text me if they wanted anything. Koi's customer and friend Emily J. Silvera is supportive of her work. Um, I actually really like it. She did like a really good job and put in a lot of effort and detail into it so like it looks really nice. I think that's actually like really cool and I think it'll work out for her because I know like a bunch of people already that are like wanting their stuff painted. Customer Alejandro Gutierrez was impressed with the quality of her art. She started posting on her story and telling everyone about her painting the phone cases. I've been wanting to do something like on my phone case for a while. She just needs to keep up doing good work on painting. You can view more of McCoy's work on her Snapchat at NM McCoy. That's it for us today on Eye of the Tiger. And remember, we're always on at eyeofthetigernews.com. See you next time.